Hi folks, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we got a few things in our episode. The first is another SpaceX launch out of Vandenberg Air Force Base, or Space Force Base in uh, Southern California. So this was a launch, a Falcon 9 rocket that launched a spy satellite into orbit. And then the booster came back and landed uh, like 100 yards away from the launch pad back on Vandenberg Air Force Base. I tried out the new ultra telephoto lens, which actually I purchased with my support from Patreon. So thank you everyone. And I think I need to do some enhancements. I may actually mount the camera with the long telephoto lens onto a gun stock with a, uh, like a rifle sight to basically pick up where the booster is in the sky as it's coming back down from outer space to land on the launch pad. It's, it's pretty hard to, to pick it out of a, of a big, huge blue sky with no re reference to, to actually know where to see the uh, repulsive engine's light to slow down the booster as it enters back into the atmosphere. So you'll see what I'm talking about. We are also going to continue working on the dual shot mold. I am warming up the mill now, and I've got some footage from last week where we squared up some of the steel inserts for all of the cavities. These are the 10 cavities times uh, two mold faces on the A side. And again, this is a mold that's gonna rotate in a dual shot molding machine with a, with a rotary table. And um, so now I am actually machining the aluminum base that the reference steel plate will, will key into with dowel pins and then also hold all of the smaller A2 tool steel mold inserts uh, where each insert has its own cavity for a total of, of 10 parts per mold half. And um, yeah, so hopefully you enjoy. Okay, we're back out here at Lompoc, California for another SpaceX Falcon 9 launch. This time I think the booster is gonna fly back and land close to where the rocket took off. We've got the usual crowd of people along the road. And it's a perfect launch day as far as I can tell. Marginal wind, absolutely clear skies. So let's see what comes up. We've got our camera set up here. You should see the rocket take off over that horizon. One, zero, ignition, liftoff of L87. Go Falcon, go, go. Stage one trajectory. Now the next couple.
have a beautiful view. Um, All right, I'm trying to I pick it up. I think that's probably one of the Channel Islands there. Yeah, there is. You see a little wisp of line. Oh, it's right. It's up there. Stage one, entry burn, startup. It's right above us. Sounds like it landed in one piece. That was the double sonic boom from the nice. going back into subsonic speed in the atmosphere. That was neat. Well, we had another successful launch, and this time, time we saw the booster come back and land on the launch pad, which was cool. Heard a double sonic boom when it re-entered in the atmosphere and broke the sound barrier coming back to subsonic speed. And now we got the big traffic jam again in Lompoc. And uh, the day launch was kind of cool too. And of course I tried out the, the new long camera lens here, so that worked out good. All right, so I've, I've pulled all the bits off of the A-side mold base of the, mold, uh, the two mold bases that I purchased for this dual mold project. And this is the second mold base. I've already actually run this operation on the first mold base. And this is the block of aluminum that supports the steel plate that then in turn keys in all the little steel cavities that are interchangeable for this mold. But what we have to do is, is square this plate up in the vise itself, I've already added 1,000 brass gems to the front of these dual curt vices. Because my finding or experience is that when I tighten these vices up, the way I've got it configured here, where I've effectively just pulled the jaws off of the vise, I've got them opened all the way. But these, these angle lock vices usually kick the stock up about 1,000 or 25 microns when you tighten down the vices. Or actually, it, it it kicks it down relative to the front. So to make a long story short, I, I usually add a 1,000 shim somewhere on these vices to correct for the angle lock action when you actually tighten these, these vices uh, to your stock. And what I'm gonna do now is find the zero location, which is this upper corner, uh, which has the stamped in zero that the mold base manufacturer added when they made these mold bases. And this is you know, it's got a ground finish on the aluminum uh, face itself. So what we want to do is find the zero in the center of this, of this origin pin up here, and then we're going to sweep across the surface with the indicator to make sure that our, our mold block is actually square in the vices or, and or perpendicular to the spindle itself. So let's do that. So we'll load that guy in, and then we can Clamp on our, our little indicator arm. Got a little bit of, okay, there we go. So you, the sweep angle of your indicator needs to be pretty close to the size of the hole that we are gonna find the center of. In fact, I may have to switch lenses. Let's see how we do here. So we'll come down in Z. And I'm gonna spin the indicator around until our ball closely matches the circumference of the of our hole that we are finding so you can see how we need to move forward we need to find this the center of this hole 
because that is the reference pin for basically locating everything in the entire mold stack. So that's why we are going to circle and interpolate to find the center of this hole versus using an edge finder to find the corner of the mold. It's good to actually move the end mill holder itself and not touch this little clamp, which isn't as sound or robust of a clamp of a, of a foundation as the spindle of the mill itself. All right, so I moved left to right by 10 microns. And your ball doesn't have to line up exactly perpendicular or, or horizontal to the hole, but you need to kind of keep track of the same kind of quadrants that you are spinning the ball in, because ultimately this ball could be totally out of whack from your spindle. But if you spin this spindle 360 degrees and the tip does not change on your needle inside of your hole, then you know that you're coaxial. All right, so now what we're gonna do is make sure that the surface of our mold base is fixtured flat in the double vise setup that we have on this mill. So I'm gonna bring this ball up so we can measure depth. And we'll touch off the surface with our indicator. You want a pretty, sh uh, you want a pretty shallow angle. You know, because uh, if, if that ball was just perpendicular, you wouldn't really be able to measure anything. And if it was too horizontal, then you'd start dragging the bottom of your indicator on your mold surface or your part that you're dialing in flat. Okay, so we'll come down and using the mill, I'll just set the Z to zero. And now we're just gonna sweep this indicator around the surface and make sure that we're reasonably flat within a thousandths of an inch or 25 microns. And we'll just jog around for a while and see how we look. We're drifting negative about one thousandth in this corner. We're staying negative one thousandth. This should bring us back to the zero. So we're right on the edge basically of being in, in what I deem as the spec for this mold. So I think I'm gonna tap the corner that is out. So I'm gonna see if I can pry up this side ever so slightly with a piece of aluminum hex rod. Oh, well there I'm, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I need to push that down. All right, there's zero. No, actually that's good. So we're zero there, and we are like two tenths off of zero there. There we are zero, and here we are half a thousandths off. Oh. And then we'll, we'll check our new flatness. 
The needle can move a little bit when you drag the across the surface just because of friction. So you want to measure when the when the needle stops. So I think that's good enough. Oh yes, and always remember to remove your your clipped on indicator from your spindle before you do a tool change or turn the spindle on. So let's open the visual mill cam system, which has the 3D model of the, of the mold base. This is the A side of the mold base, an aluminum block. And we, what we're going to do is machine a bunch of mounting holes using the M3 screw holes that you see here. So we got to drill and tap those. And then other things that we're going to machine here is, a, is the dowel pin holes that will reference the half inch plate. Uh, that's also machined out of A2 tool steel onto the top of the of the block itself. And then that other highlighted hole, these holes that I'm showing you here, are going to be M6 holes that hold the reference plate down to the surface of this aluminum mold base. Uh, and then the center hole in the middle is going to be a clearance hole for the nozzle to go through and inject the plastic. So here you can see the drill center operation where we basically just Put a little dimple on the surface of the mold so that the drill bits can find their home when we drill the drilled holes. Again, these are for all the M3 mounting holes. Actually, this is for everything. Oh, okay, here we go. These, these are the drilled holes for the M3 mounted holes. And then we're going to tap those holes using a spiral cut tap. And then the next operation will be to drill the holes for the dowel pins as well as the M6 threaded holes. And then finally we're going to go in and, and thread the M6 threaded holes. Uh, the final operation is to machine out a big clearance hole in the middle of the block so that the nozzle can fit through the block. This is the hot nozzle in the molding machine and inject plastic through the back of this A-side mold insert. And that's just some of the tool path of the half inch end mill cutting that, that big hole in the middle for our hot nozzle clearance. And that's about it. Oh, one other thing. So we're going to drill the dowel pin holes and then we're going to machine those dowel pin holes using a 3 to get a nice press fit because the dowel pin holes are going to reference the plate correctly to the base of this mold. Okay, so we got all the tools loaded and the offsets set. Uh, from the previous part that we ran. So I am going to hit automatic and run. Now I'll slow things down because it's been a couple of days since I ran this before. <laughs> but this is the tool center and this will set all the drill center points. And here we go. One last safety check. All right. I'll speed up the rapid now. Now we're going to do a tapping operation and I'm going to add some oil to the holes that we're going to tap with this M3 tap, uh, mostly because I just don't want this thing to break off because you know, this is kind of an expensive part and it's a small little tap. We're going to be spinning at about 150 RPM and the, this is rigid tapping so the mill synchronizes the helix on the tap with the spindle speed and the Z axis and it dials in the the helix motion for cutting the cut tap and then it reverses the tap back out and goes to the next one. 
and I'll be hitting the uh, coolant every now and then too. All right. I'm also going to blow the uh, the little threads off of the tap. This is a spiral tap, so it pushes the threads out the top of the hole. So this is the hole that may be a little too deep for this drill bit. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I can always interrupt it and pull the drill bit out or the entire tool. make it okay so I've interrupted the program and I'll see if I can pull this tool out and keep the program running and I can <laughs> yeah so right now I've I pulled this drill chuck out and the tool holder uh, but the mill thinks it's still drilling a hole this hole is a hole I added and I can always uh, add these two holes with the drill press or wait for the whole program to finish and then put a taller drill bit into this tool holder. All right, now we're gonna tap our mounting holes. This tap is bigger, so I'm not as worried about it breaking off. This is an M6 by one bottoming tap. And it spirals the threads out the top too, but the coolant is blowing them off. We'll do one without coolant.
so we can recap what we've done this week for the double dual shot mold set that we're making right now. And the main task of that, well, actually a lot of stuff happened this week. We did a lot of, of roughing out of steel inserts. But uh, what we did do that uh, is in this particular episode is we modified the A side of the mold kit that was purchased from AQ Molds, uh, if anyone was, was curious. And I went ahead and machined all of the mounting holes and the dowel pin reference holes to register our EDM cut steel reference plate. This is A2 steel which is going to mount like this. And then all of these machined A2 inserts that we're going to apply are going to fit over our threaded M3 holes in the aluminum plate. And this outer steel frame is going to lock in these inserts, kind of like stacking dominoes, in the X and Y location. Yeah, so you can probably just peek past this rough EDM cut pocket to all of our little mounting holes that we have for mounting our core inserts. And all four sides of the mold will have an array of, uh, of 10 of these inserts. So that'd be 40 of these inserts of various types that we are going to, or continue to make. Ultimately, these are all gonna be finished with the EDM machine. So, Next step is we are going to machine the finished profile of these reference plates and then key them into these dowel pin holes that we machined into the mold surface. And then the back of the A side of the two mold pairs, we've machined out the clearance for the nozzle on the molding machine itself. So the nozzle is basically what is going to pierce through basically the entire A side of the mold and the hot nozzle of the injection unit of the molding machine will basically touch off on the back of our steel plate. So our entire sprue height is only gonna be about half an inch, which is gonna be nice because it's less, less scrap than we have to basically waste in just runners and sprues. But the hot nozzle on the injection molding machine does have a band heater like this, such that you know the plastic remains molten and flows into the mold. And I did have to basically design clearance for this little connector box, as well as the strap clamp and these, and these bolts on the bottom that uh, basically cinch this guy down onto the hot nozzle of the injection unit on the molding machine. So you can see here how we, I basically had to clear out a bunch of stuff so that this, this guy would fit in there. And then, so on the A side of this molding uh, of this mold, it's actually comprised of two parts. There's the main block itself, and then there's this clamping plate or cap plate or whatever you want to call it. And we had to machine the clearance for this heater and the nozzle of the injection unit through this plate as well. And this plate is going to bolt on like so, and then our toe clamps will actually clamp the A side of the mold stack, this guy, plus our plates and everything, will be clamped onto the A side of the molding machine using this, this, uh, this little toe clamp pocket and everything like that. And then finally, we machined a bunch of features in the back here to use our reference ring. So this ring basically keys into a reference ring in the injection molding machine itself on the A side platen. And we needed that to basically be a reasonably good fit on the back of this mold as well. So this is where we are at for this week. And some additional work that was done off, offline are all of these uh, inserts, which I am going to be showing to everyone soon.
Yeah, this insert, plus three other types or variations of this, of this steel insert. So thanks for watching this week. Hope you enjoyed the machining and the rocket launch from SpaceX. And if you'd like to contribute to the show, I'd appreciate it if you check out Dragonfly Engineering on Patreon. And also please like and subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to see more episodes like this. Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend.